With PCI Express 5.0, consumers now have the opportunity to rev up their systems with blazing fast Gen 5 NVMe SSDs. Some of these SSDs have speeds well above 10 gigabytes per second. Today, we're going to be checking out MSI's latest Spadium M580. Can running your games on such a speedy drive impact your gaming performance? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Today we're going to be checking out an NVMe SSD that was sent over to me from MSI. This is their latest Spadium M580, which is a Gen 5 NVMe drive. This is going to be a first for the channel because we usually don't review SSDs. However, this gave me an opportunity to test out something that's been on my mind for a while now, which is if using a faster SSD can in any way boost your gaming performance in modern titles. Before we jump into the test results, I wanted to first go over some specifications for this SSD as well as talk about its design. So the SSD itself is using your standard M.2 2280 form factor, but when you first look at this thing, you might be surprised by its gargantuan size compared to even a SSD with a small heatsink. This is because the M580 is using a tweaked or revised Fizen E26 controller, which is utilized by various Gen 5 drives on the market, and it's known to get quite hot under load. The version of the M580 I have here is the 2TB model, which is rated for sequential read speeds of up to 14,600 megabytes per second and write speeds of up to 12,700 megabytes per second. Those speeds are no joke and this is a nice step up from their previous gen M570 because of Micron's 232 layer NAND flash which is rated to run at 2400 megatransfers per second. Hence you see the reason why this SSD needs this large heatsink to keep it cool. Along with that, the 2TB version of this drive has 4GB of LPDDR4 on board to act as its DRAM cache. In terms of dimensions, the SSD with the heatsink is 94.8mm in length, 24mm wide, and is 71.65mm in height. So if you plan on getting one of these drives, you'll definitely want to double check if you've got space for it. Getting this to work in an ITX build might be a bit tricky or impossible. The cooler itself has an aluminum stacked fin heatsink with three heat pipes running through it to keep it passively cooled. So the advantage here is that you won't have to worry about dealing with a pesky small fan running at like 4000 RPM, but the trade-off here here is that you get a large heatsink you have to accommodate. Since we're on the subject of cooling, we might as well talk about the thermal results. Under a sustained read stress test, the drive averaged just 48 degrees Celsius, and during our write stress test, the drive averaged 63 degrees Celsius, and this is without any proper airflow. I do have a fan that's plopped on top of my RAM, so if there was any bit of airflow coming, it would have been from there, but um, I'm actually quite impressed by these results of the heatsink, and this will help it from thermal throttling. Now that we've gone over the specifications, designs, and thermal results, we'll be moving on to the test results from some of our benchmarks, but before we do, I just wanted to give you guys a rundown of our test system specs. For the CPU, we've got an Intel Core i9-3900K, which has its P-Cores overclocked to 5.7 GHz, E-Cores running at 4.6 GHz, and the ring is overclocked to 5 GHz. For our system memory, we've got 32 GB of Team Group's T-Create, DDR5 memory running at 7200 mega transfers with tuned timings. The motherboard is an MSI Z790 Carbon Wi-Fi, which works great for our test system since it has a PCI Express 5.0 M.2 slot. But keep in mind, once we have our drive installed, it cuts the bandwidth of our GPU to PCI Express 4.0 X8, which may concern some of you at first, because you might be thinking that by using a Gen 5 drive, you're going to lose out on some gaming performance. While I have tested this in the past, and the performance loss is very minor, a couple of FPS, absolutely nothing you would notice. For the GPU, we've got an MSI RTX 4090 Gaming X Trio, running its core at 3GHz, and the memory is at 24 gigabits per second. For the rest of the specs, you can check them out in the video description. Up first, we have Crystal Disk, and like I mentioned, since I don't do SSD reviews on this channel, I don't have a plethora of other drives to compare this to, but I did have a Corsair MP600 Pro LPX4 terabyte that stores all my games on my test bench, and this drive is also a higher end Gen 4 drive, so we can see how much of an improvement you'd get going from a high end Gen 4 drive to one of the fastest Gen 5 drives. You can see just how much faster the MSI M580 is compared to the Gen 4 Corsair drive. We're looking at basically double the performance in sequential read and writes. Though do keep in mind my Corsair drive is about 90% full, so that could be potentially impacting some of its performance. Up next, we have the Atto Disk Benchmark, and we can basically see a similar story when dealing with larger file sizes. The MSI M580 leaves the Corsair MP600 Pro into dust in write performance, 
performance, it's about 85% faster. And when it comes to reads, we're looking at a margin of 104%. So when it comes to a scenario where you're dealing with large files for content creation projects or in regards to video editing, and you need to move these large files as fast as possible to increase workflow, the M580 will be quite beneficial to the user. I can see this Gen 5 drive appealing to someone who's looking at maximizing their workflow and especially if they're making money from it and their livelihood depends on it. So yeah, if you want something as fast as possible, then Gen 5 is the way to go. When it comes to gaming, 3D Mark do also have a pretty cool storage benchmark as part of their 3D Mark suite. I like this benchmark because it provides the user with insight on some real world testing and practical tests such as loading save game profiles, saving games, installing game files, and recording gameplay video streams. In the storage benchmark, it tests load times for Battlefield 5, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, and Overwatch. You can see how the higher bandwidth and lower access times would result in quicker load times for the M580 over the MP600. And Installing game files, creating save files, and recording gameplay, and saving streams would be quick as well. So all around, better performance. Moving on, and I wanted to show you guys some actual loading tests from some modern titles, and while our synthetic benchmarks showed some impressive numbers, these type of results will paint a different picture. As you can see in Cyberpunk 2077 and Hogwarts Legacy, which are open world games, load times are better on the M580, but the user would not be able to tell the difference as those load times were already blistering fast. We're talking about less than a second. I also tested Baldur's Gate 3, which I've noticed has some relatively longer loading times. I mean, less than a minute really isn't that big of a deal, but in this case, compared to the other titles we've looked at, it is substantially longer. But we can see with the M580, the difference between that and the MP600. We're looking at a difference of around 4 to 5 seconds. It's not a big deal. The next game we have is Forspoken, and it's not a game that was received well, and I doubt there's very many who play it, but I threw this into the results because it does support my Microsoft's direct storage, and that results in some ridiculously quick loading times in around 2-3 to three seconds. You basically press play, and then you're in the game right away, which looking at it from a technical standpoint, it is impressive because a game of this scale and size being open world, you'd expect there to be some kind of loading times. Wasn't there that one space game that came out with a lot of hype that ended up using tech from like a decade ago? and wasn't able to keep up with modern games? Hmm, I wonder what that one was. In any case, direct storage is really cool, and I wish more games would support this tech going forward. Now, the main question I asked at the start of the video was if using a Gen 5 drive that provides us with substantially more bandwidth helps improve gaming performance in any way. Well, I tested those same four titles and found that there's basically no impact to gaming performance at all. The results are basically within margin of error here, which is what I had expected. Performance of modern games is usually determined by how fast your CPU, GPU, and RAM are. And if you're gaming on an SSD as opposed to a hard drive, which at this point, I think a good chunk of the PC gaming user base is on, then you wouldn't see a big difference anyway. Even if you're gaming on a mid-tier Gen 3 SSD, heck, even a SATA SSD, there's really no reason to be worried about anything as that will still provide the user with ample speed and adequate load times. But who knows, as games become larger and more complex with more tech in them, we might see a change in the future where the engines can leverage the higher bandwidth from these fast SSDs. In conclusion, the MSI Spadium M580 Gen 5 NVMe SSD is a beast when it comes to raw performance. It offers blazing fast speeds that are almost double compared to a high-end Gen 4 drive, making it an excellent choice for professionals who handle large files and require quick data transfers. However, when it comes to gaming, you won't really see any benefit with the way games are currently built. Nonetheless, if you're interested in this drive, I'll have some links in the video description for you to check out, and if you're interested in picking it up. Alrighty guys, that will do it for this one. We'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.